Okay, we will continue the lecture on thick cylinder. Uh, we have another example here. This is a cylinder from a hydraulic jack. Okay, so we are talking about this part here. That's the cylinder for the hydraulic jack. Uh, it's given here the bore or internal diameter is 150 mm, so that is di, and it is required to operate up to 13.8 megapascal. This is the internal pressure, so that is pi, right? Determine the required wall thickness. So what is T for the wall? For a limiting tensile stress in the material of 41.4. So this is the limiting tensile stress or we will call it sigma allowable. Right? So if we take a look at the cylinder itself, now how this operates is it is sitting in atmosphere. So what we know is PO is equal to P atmosphere. Okay, so for the cylinder itself, we have PI here inside the cylinder. So we, when we pump this pump here, it will push fluid, it will pull from the reservoir, it will push into this cavity here, which will then increase the pressure to push this ramp up. So the cylinder will have to support this pressure and it must not exceed this stress which is tensile stress so if we take a look at the boundary condition we know that inside the cylinder we have a pressure right therefore at ri this is the internal radius we have sigma r is equal to minus pi so we have minus 13.8. And when it says limiting tensile stress of 41.4 megapascal, tensile stress in a thick cylinder is given by the hoop or circumferential stress. So in other words, this is sigma C or sigma H. Okay, either one. You can use it. So this is sigma C or sigma H. And from previous lecture, we know that the distribution of the circumferential stress, we have the largest value of circumferential stress is at the inner uh, surface of the cylinder when R is equal to Ri. So at the inner surface, Ri, then we have sigma C is equal to 41.4 megapascal so now we have two boundary conditions that is sufficient for us to solve for the two lamis constant so maximum tensile circumferential stress is given by uh, a plus b over r square and the radial stress is a minus b over r square so we replace all the values and solve it simultaneously it will give us a is equal to 13.8 megapascal and b is 154.5 kilonewtons so from the boundary conditions we can get the constants for lamis equation now if we want to find the stress on the outside surface we know that for the outside surface we have uh, p atmosphere so sigma r is zero and we have a and b from our previous calculation a is 13.8 megapascal and b is 154.5 kilonewtons so from this equation we can get r therefore r is equal to 0 0.106 meters or 10.6 millimeters minimum right so it should be 10.6 or larger
Okay, the value we find here is RO and our previous value RI is 75 mm. So this is 106 mm. Therefore, our thickness T is RO minus RI. So we have 31 mm. O is Okay, then we go to longitudinal stress. Remember, we have circumferential stress, we have uh, radius stress, and we have another, which is perpendicular to the other two, which is longitudinal stress. There are a few conditions for the thick cylinder. The first condition, as we have discussed before, is open-ended cylinders. So we have an open-ended cylinders. The cover at the ends are not fixed to the cylinder. So the cylinder can slide with the cover. Therefore, the cover is not going to exert any longitudinal load on the cylinder itself. In this case, sigma L is zero. So for open-ended cylinders, sigma L is always zero. So some textbook we write as sigma Z. Okay. And when sigma L is zero, the longitudinal strain, strain epsilon Z or epsilon L, will be left with just negative nu over E sigma R plus sigma C. If you follow other textbook or other uh, authors, you'd find that they use a slightly different equation because they don't use Lamy's equation. So they come up with equations like the one on the right. Okay, this equation is not from Lamy's equation. The second condition that we have is for closed ends. So when we have closed ends, the cover at the ends are fixed to the cylinder. Therefore, the internal pressure pushing on the cover will also apply longitudinal stress on the cylinder walls. Okay, so the cylinder walls will experience longitudinal stresses due to the longitudinal force, and we have sigma L or sigma Z. Okay, this can be sigma L, it can be sigma Z. <coughs> If you take equilibrium of forces in the horizontal direction, we have forces to the right from PI, okay, acting on the internal surface of the cover. And then we have forces to the left due to the longitudinal stress in the, in the wall, right? Plus the external pressure acting on the cover, PO. So if you Write the equation, then you have Pi times Ri squared is to the right. Okay. Po times Pi Ro squared is to the left. So it's minus. And then you have also sigma z times the area where it acts. Now the area is an analyst. Okay. It's a ring. So what you can do is for the area itself, this is the external area minus the whole which is pi ri squared. So you have the force acting to the left. Now in this case, 
sigma L is not zero. Okay, sigma L or sigma Z is not zero. The longitudinal stress then, sigma L or sigma Z is given by this equation. If you do not use Lame, you can derive them anyway from this equation. Okay, from the equilibrium equation, you can derive this. Or if you use Lame's equation, sigma L for close ends is equal to A. Right? And this is true only for thick cylinder due to pressure alone. And the longitudinal strain then, sigma Z, uh, epsilon Z is equal to sigma Z over E or sigma L over E minus mu over E times sigma R plus sigma C. Okay. Now the third condition for thick cylinder is when you have the cylinder is built in, built in between rigid and supports. Okay. It's built in and this is, for example, this diagram here, this two are the end supports. You have the cylinder in between and the end supports are tied together with uh, uh, nut and bolts rigidly so that they do not move. So when you put in pressure inside, now the end caps here will not separate. The length remains L. L do not change. Okay. <clears throat> so in this case, we know that the length do not change or we will say that the strain is zero. Right? Therefore, it's a plain strain condition. Epsilon Z or Epsilon L or Epsilon 3 for the third principal direction, which is longitudinal, is zero. Therefore, if we write down the strain equation, okay, strain Z is zero or strain L is equal to sigma Z over E minus mu over E sigma R plus sigma C. Now, the longitudinal stress, sigma L, is equal to then this part here, right? It's equal to nu sigma r plus sigma c. So this is, if you use Lame's equation, you just put in the values of sigma r and sigma c and also nu, then you can get sigma l or the longitudinal stress. Mm -hmm. Now this equation is for the other method. Okay, now sigma z is equal to sigma c plus sigma r over 2 if sigma c and sigma r are stresses at the same point. Okay, it can be sigma 3. So for open-ended, remember sigma l is 0. For close ends, it is equal to Lamis constant A. Maximum shear stress. Now, the three stresses we have been talking about, the radial, the circumferential, and the longitudinal stresses are all principal stresses in a thick cylinder under pressure alone. Okay? So, we can also find maximum shear stress just like what we do in uh, chapter 1 for stress transformation. You can draw the mouse circle if you want to and get maximum shear stress because we know sigma c, sigma r, and maybe we have a value for sigma l. So for an element at a point distance r and arbitrary distance from the cylinder center line, the actual maximum shear stress is given by this equation here. Right? Because one is positive, the other one is negative. So if you have a more circle, then you know that sigma 1 will be on one side, sigma 2 will be on the other side. Okay? In this case, sigma 1 is equal to sigma r. And sigma 2 is equal to sigma, sorry. 
in this case sigma 1 is equal to sigma c and sigma 2 is equal to sigma r because sigma r is negative therefore if you draw a more circle you know that the maximum shear stress is equal to the radius of the circle and the radius of the circle is equal to sigma c minus sigma r over 2 and if you are using Lamy's equation, there's a spelling mistake there. It's using Lamy's equation. Uh, tau max is equal to B over R squared. It's the second term for Lamy's equation. Okay. And maximum shear stress occurs when R is smallest. So, R smallest for a thick cylinder is when R is equal to I, R I. Therefore, tau max is equal to B over R I square. Right? Then we go to dimensional change. Similar to thin cylinder, in thick cylinder, so we can then uh, evaluate the dimensional change. Number one is change in diameter or diametrical change. The diametrical strain, epsilon d for diameter, is equal to the circumferential strain. Okay. And so we can then either find circumferential strain and equate to diametrical, diametrical strain or the other way around. So Epsilon D is equal to delta D, change in diameter over original diameter. And so change in diameter is equal to the diametrical strain times D or also equal to the circumferential strain times D. Now we can get circumferential strain because we have the stresses. We have sigma C, sigma L and sigma R. From Hooke's law, we know that Epsilon C is equal to 1 over E times sigma C minus nu sigma L minus nu sigma R. If we replace this equation into the first equation for delta D, then what we get is this equation here. Delta D is equal to D over E times sigma C minus nu sigma L minus nu sigma R. So that is diametrical change, change in diameter. Okay. Longitudinal change, epsilon L, is change in length over original length and we get it from Hooke's law for the equation for strain to stress and so we can get this last equation here, delta L or change in length is L over E times Sima L minus nu sima C minus nu sima R. Okay, example. We have a thick cylinder made of steel with an internal diameter of 100 millimeters and external diameter of 200 millimeters is pressurized under an internal pressure of 70 megapascal. So what we then have here is DI is 100. DO, here is DO is 200 mm and PI is 70 megapascal and PO, PO is 12 megapascal. So in this case, PO is not atmospheric, therefore it is not zero. Okay. So determine the maximum and minimum tensile stresses in the cylinder. So what are the maximum and minimum tensile stresses? So in the cylinder, we know that the tensile stresses are sigma C or sigma H, right? The tangential or circumferential stress. And then we are also asked to find the actual maximum shear stress. So this is the shear stress. And finally, change in internal and external diameter. Assuming cylinder is open-ended. Okay. 
So the last one is assumption of cylinder is open ended. So when it is open ended, we know that sigma L is zero. Okay. Given E is 200 gigapascal and new is 0 0.3, so in this case, we will need to use this because it involves change in diameter of strain. So that's the solution, not from the textbook. This is what I have done before to share with you. So RI is 0 0.05, RO is 0 0.1, PI is 70 megapascal and PO is 12 megapascal. Okay, so we just take from these values here. <coughs> Those are the values given. So from Lamy's equation, we have sigma C is equal to A plus B over R squared. Sigma R is A minus B over R squared. So now the boundary condition that we have, these two are the boundary conditions. Okay. <clears throat> when R is equal to Ri, we have Pi is 70 megapascal, or we have sigma R is negative Pi or negative 70 megapascal. So if we put that in the equation, then we have equation one. When R is equal to the outer radius, 0 0.1 meters, we have sigma R is equal to minus PO, is equal to minus 12 megapascal. And again, using Lamy's equation for sigma R, we have equation two. Now we solve equation one and two simultaneously, right? And we can get the value of B is 0 0.1933 meganewton. And A is equal to 7.33 megapascal. So we have the two Lamy's constant. Or if you want to change this to uh, kilonewtons, then it's 193.3 kilonewtons. Okay. So we put it into Lamy's equation because we already have uh, sigma r and the constants. The questions want us to find the largest and smallest tensile stress, which is sigma C. So we replace A and B in the sigma C equation. Then we have 7.33 plus 0 0.1933 over R squared. That is sigma C. So we have two limits for uh, the distribution of the stresses, remember, if you have the thick cylinder, the largest uh, stress will be somewhere inside. Then we have a curve and sigma C outer and sigma C inner. Sigma C inner is the largest tensile stress. So when R is equal to Ri, we have sigma C is 84.65 megapascal. And when R is equal to RO, we have sigma C is 26.66 megapascal. And those two are the answers for part A. For part B, maximum shear stress, we know that one stress or sigma CI is positive and sigma RI is negative. So you use for the same location, okay? Tau max is for the same location. You do not combine sigma CI with sigma RO, which is much smaller value, because they are different place. They are at different location. You just use the same location. So tau max is equal to sigma C minus sigma R over two. So sigma C is 84.65 megapascal. Sigma R is negative 70 megapascal. So what you get is 77.33 megapascal as the maximum shear stress. Okay, so you get this answer here. Now diameter change. Change in diameter, delta D from our previous equation is equal to D over E 
times sigma C minus nu sigma R plus sigma L. Now we know that it is open-ended, so sigma L is zero. So this here then becomes zero. So we are left with sigma R and sigma C. So the largest value for both is internal, right? So we find internal first. Delta di or change in the internal diameter is equal to d original diameter over e times sigma c for internal minus new sigma r for internal. This is for the internal diameter. If you solve this, you will get delta di is 0 0.053 millimeters. Okay, for the outer diameter, outer diameter, then we use the outer stresses, sigma C outer and sigma R outer as well. Okay, so delta D O change in the outer diameter or external diameter is equal to D, in this case D O over E times sigma C O minus new sigma R O. Okay, so we can get the change in the external diameter is 0 0.03 mm. Okay. And that is uh, how we use Lamis theorem to solve ticks in the problem and combine with Hooke's law to solve for any change in diameter and also strain.